Fifty years ago, tattoos were the mark of rebels and outcasts. They were shared amongst gangsters, veterans, and carnival freaks. But today, a tattoo can be found on your average college student. In fact, based off the statistics I gathered off of SurveyMonkey, 87% of those of you in the audience know at least one person with a tattoo. The purpose of me up here today is obviously to inform you a little bit about tattoos. And when we're finished, you'll have a better understanding of the history, the process, and why those who have them choose to have them. Did you know that the first tattooed man was what died 700 years before the pyramids of Giza were even constructed? It's nearly 5,000 years ago. In 1991, scientists, uh, they found the remains of a mummy that they named Atsi. National Geographic states, the Iceman's tattoos are largely seen on the parts of his body, body that endured wear and tear, causing archaeologists to liken the practice of tattooing to acupuncture, which is itself an ancient treatment for joint distress. This means that tattoos were not there for ornamentation, but they were there for medication. The word tattoo had not been originated yet. It actually came from a, a, a word, the Polynesian word tatau, which is spelled T-A. T -A -U. The Polynesians used tattoos to express their identity, their personality, and their life story. Their sessions would last up to three days. Can you imagine getting tattooed for three days? And their recovery time sometimes lasted over a year. A lot of infections came with this, and I'll explain later what that process of tattooing was like, but it's, it's unbearable. <clears throat> In their culture, which is what most tattoos are, it's, they're all culture referenced, um, you were considered less of a man if you could not bear this, this tattoo process. So let's fast forward hundreds of years, and finally, welcome to America. According to National Geographic, New York inventor Samuel O'Reilly patented the first electrical tattoo machine in 1891. Here's a representation of what it is. Tattoos were not popular by any means in 1891, but over the next 50 years, they gained popularity amongst American fringe cultures, sailors, and veterans. And today, 87% of us know at least one person with a tattoo. So now that we have a brief history of the tattoo, let's uh, get into the process and how, a little bit how it works. So literally, the process of a tattoo is inserting an ink into your skin. It sounds gruesome, but there's two layers. The epidermis is the upper layer. The dermis is where the, the ink of the tattoo is actually held. So anything that's on the epidermis is actually going to wash away when you're in the shower. Obviously, it needs to uh, heal after it's in the epidermis. There's two styles of tattooing, traditional and modern. Here's an example of the traditional style of tattooing. It's actually called tibori. It's, an it's another Polynesian word, the same culture where tatau came from. Um, they used animal tusks. That they, would dip, they would sharpen these animal tusks, dip ink on the animal tusk, and literally tap it directly into the skin. You can imagine an animal tusk going into your epidermis, it probably would not feel very good. Uh, this is an incredibly painful and time-consuming style of tattooing, and it was actually passed down from father to son. So a son would literally watch his dad tattoo this man for up to three days, um, most times learning for about 15 to 20 years, and then he would then take over. And it was considered a sacred ritual, so it was very high status in their, in their, uh, in their culture. The modern style of tattooing uses an electrical gun, which actually sends the needle in rapid movements about 80 to 150 times per second into the second layer of skin. This style is a lot more sanitized. Um, alcohol is actually applied on the area before, during, and after tattoo to ensure that you're not getting infected. Uh, the artist has to wash his hands constantly throughout the process. Um, well, gloves are worn all throughout the process, but they're constantly thrown out. So this. Uh, it's kind of a wash, rinse, repeat, if you will. Uh, it's important to soap the area and then apply lotion in the next couple days to, to make sure this tattoo heals because essentially that needle was in your epidermis. <coughs> now we know a little bit about the process. Let's find out who has them. According to Statistic Brain, 36% of adults 18 to 25, which, which, which is within our range, have tattoos. That is literally... If we keep it to scale, that's a third of the class in scale with the United States in our, in our uh, you know, country. 28% are African American, 22% are Caucasian, 
The other 50 are, are other, or not available. So in today's day and age, tattoos are not just for criminals or sailors or veterans anymore. You know, some people choose to hang their art on the wall, and some people choose to...